boiling point of Americans who are fed up of the injustices of Black people that have resulted in various disparities, the oppression of Black people, and often death. We recognize that simply doing the right thing has never been enough, but we have to hold each other accountable, use our voice rather than be, be silenced, and to recognize our, pri our privilege and to use that to protect, to protect one another. At Morehouse, we challenge our students to add to our long history of human rights leadership and to do so by leveraging our male privilege to fight for others while remaining sensitive and committed to fighting for our individual selves. We would like to celebrate all Barna schools who have used their platforms to support Black Lives Matter efforts as we fight for equality, as well as issue a call for action for those who have been silent. Let us share our Barna love boldly, consistently, and courageously. Today, each presenter will dedicate their portion of their presentation to a Black victim of police brutality. Without any further ado, I would like to turn it over to our scholars, Tyron Gamble, class of 2023, who is an incoming uh, freshman class coordinator. Gregory Bell, class of 2022, who is the scholarship application chair. And London Stubbs, class of 22, who is scholarship ac application committee member as well, who wasn't able to join us because he fell sick. And last but definitely not least, Jer Jared Bailey, class of 2021, our incoming senior intern. Hey everyone, uh, once again, my name is Jared Bailey and I am a junior biology major. I'm a senior biology major from Atlanta, Georgia. I currently serve as a senior Bonner intern for the Bonner Office of Community Service at Morehouse College. And I would like to dedicate my presentation to police brutality victim, Philando Castile. On July 6, 2016, Philando Castile, a 32 year old black man, was killed by the hands of officer Geronimo Yanez, who was quote unquote, in fear of his life after Mr. Castillo reached for his wallet to provide documentation during a traffic stop in St. Paul, Minnesota. He notified officer Yanez that he was armed and had a permit for his weapon. As he reached for his wallet with his four year old daughter and girlfriend accompanying him in his vehicle, he was shot multiple times. On various news platforms, the echoing of their screams can be heard. All charges of manslaughter were acquitted on Officer Yanez's behalf and was paid a lump sum of money for paid leave and 600 hours of accrued and unused personal leave pay. To end this harsh and oppressive cycle of police brutality, I challenge those who are bystanders to speak up and safely make your presence known. Call government officials and take concerns to city council meetings and demand police accountability and a force that's worthy of the community's trust. Now, let's go into the mission of Morehouse College. The mission of Morehouse College is to develop men with disciplined minds who will lead lives of leadership and service. Our previous president of Morehouse College, Dr. Robert Franklin, highlights five important expectations that all men of Morehouse must meet to follow the mission of the illustrious institution, which are to be well-read, well-spoken, well-traveled, well-dressed and well-balanced. These ideals promote the importance of being professional and culturally profound to continue the legacy of those before us at this historically black college. The Morehouse Bonner Scholar Program is one of two historically black colleges in the Bonner Network. We also have a network of four member institutions in the Atlanta University Center such as Spelman College, Clark Atlanta University, Morehouse School of Medicine, and Morris Brown College, with a vibrant intellectual tradition of scholarship, service, and community engagement. Founded in 1992, the Morehouse Bonner Office of Community Service takes pride in its pivotal role and history of dedication and hard work in the areas of local public school mentorship, homelessness, food banks, research-based programs, business affiliates, environmental programs, and much, much more. The Bonner Office of Community Services mission is to perpetuate a culture of service on and off campus. We support the college's efforts in developing men with disciplined minds who will lead lives of leadership, service, and self-realization. 
We use community development, community-based research, and service learning to increase the effectiveness of campus-wide efforts and community service. Our goal is to serve as the centralized single point of contact for external community service projects and create linkages with community partners. Next slide, please. Under the leadership of our director, Dr. Wilbur Monty Whitney, and our assistant director, Kevin D. Chapman Jr., class of 2006, we are compromised of 60 scholars. We have a selected leadership team to guide the program smooth and efficiently. These positions include a senior body intern, a compliance officer, class coordinators, marketing and civic engagement coordinators, and an alumni ambassador. Duties range from program leadership of key implementations, tracking policies and procedures through evaluation methods, Bonner alumni engagement, highlighting talents and accolades of scholars, and student class management and organization. Given the honor and privilege to select the incoming cohort of Bonner scholars, scholarship committee members are compromised of key representatives of the Bonner program. All voting measures are done in a certain matter of time and order, in which our next speaker will discuss in greater detail. It's Mr. Chapman again. On behalf of London Stubbs, who fell ill uh, yesterday, I will present on his behalf. London Stubbs is a member of the class of 2022. His hometown is Chicago, Illinois. His service site is the Morehouse College Community Revitalization Initiative, which is uh, focused on civic engagement and community building. And he would like to dedicate his portion of this presentation to Laquan McDonald, a police brutality victim in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois. Laquan was an unarmed black man who was shot in the back 16 times and killed by Officer Jason Van Dyke in 2014. Officer Van Dyke was not charged until four years later in 2018 and up until then was placed on paid leave. He was only charged with second degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated uh, battery, receiving just seven years in federal prison after taking Mr. McDonald's life. So what we'll like to talk about today is the component of our entry or pre-screening uh, requirements. So at Morehouse, the mission is to identify young men who are committed to service and leadership. So we kind of doubled down on that with the Bonner Scholar Pro Program. So we're looking for a, a huge passion and commitment for service. And what that looks like is not simply the amount of community service offer, uh, hours that they complete during their high school years, but also any selfless um, family contributions that, that they may have. So we're aware that some young men may need to work to help contribute to their household, may need to take care of family members, being it siblings or um, their elderly. So we also count those hours. To make sure that we are only looking at applications for students who are serious about coming to Morehouse, we ask that they have been accepted and received their acceptance letters from Morehouse before they apply to our program, as well as completed their FAFSA um, and have included Morehouse on that FAFSA so that we have the demographic information to package them accordingly. Um, in addition, we require that they have a 2.5 GPA or higher, which is typically not a problem. And then last but not least, um, we look at their expected family contribution, their out-of-pocket information or costs. Um, and we want that to be below 18,000 so that we meet the requirements uh, for the cohort based upon um, the foundation. So next, we'll like to review the actual application itself. So our previous senior intern, uh, Nate Green, uh, an educator, you know, he's going to education, uh, very passionate brother. Um, our students play a very vital role in providing feedback and letting us know how we can continue to improve and be in sync with our community partners and our uh, students on college, on the college campus. And one of the things that he offered was a different format. So we went to going uh, electronic and removing from paper and then also adding different features to allow our uh, applicants 
to highlight their service uh, passions in different ways, be it a video, uh, be it a, a musical song, um, poetry, spoken word, and so on and so forth, or even artwork and pictures. So on our application, uh, we want to make sure we take advantage of sharing who we are as an organization, um, sharing our history and our uh, contributions to not only Morehouse, but the larger community. Um, and also talk about our brothers and sisters across the nation in the Barner Network. So here, uh, because we are one, uh, we, our program is very unique as far as the funding. There's no definite amount that each scholar will receive because of the structure of the Barner Scholarship Program. So we provide that information in the application itself so that um, our applicants can review it and they can review that with their parents as well since it's not straightforward. But we highlight the financial aid package, um, those stipulations, the school year support, the stipends, um, as well as the summer living stipend and the summer earning. So we definitely talk dollars and cents, and then we also highlight the amount of service hours that those students um, must complete in order to receive compensation and to renew their scholarship for the ongoing years. In red, you will notice that um, our different deadlines. So we are very sensitive to um, the fact that families have huge decisions to determine where their students will go to school and be prepared for, um, for the rest of their lives, right? Or get that starting point. So we wanna make sure that we receive everyone's application, we review those thoroughly, and we get those um, decisions back to families early enough so that they can um, participate in the various celebrations and make an informed decision uh, with, uh, without any duress. So we also collect personal information. So the M number, kind of speaking back to um, our applicants needing to apply to the school and receive acceptance first, a M number is assigned uh, once a student has been accepted to the college. That's their uh, student ID number. And then we ask for uh, you know, basic contact information. And, um, and then you'll see different upload features. So we ask for a copy of their student A report to make sure that they're providing the correct numbers. And then we also ask about their uh, intended major study. Sometimes it may change by the time that they actually arrive on campus and that's fine. We just use that to highlight um, the, who they may be placed with for their first year or throughout the, um, their experience here. We get more information about their village, so who we're gonna contact, um, references, so on and so forth. So it's a pretty involved form. Um, it gives you flexibility to receive information um, in different formats. And it also has uh, the different prompts that we ask to do some of our pre-screenings to really dive into their level of commitment to service and social justice. So these are some of the questions that you'll see here. The next session that you'll see on the scholarship application is the acknowledgement section. So this goes over the terms. So this is what is expected of our scholars and the, um, their funding for it. So it's for eight semesters, so on and so forth. The beautiful thing about this, uh, this online form that we use is once they submit the form, it timestamps it. We're able to send that to each committee person to make them aware that we have another applicant who's expressed interest. And then on the back side of it, um, the scholar actually receives a detailed email with a copy of what they submitted to us. So there's no confusion about that and that we actually received it. And they also receive information on the next steps. Um, in the application process. So that is our, um, our online application. We do have a feature which allows us to make it open uh, on a certain date as well as close once the deadline has arise. And without any further ado, I'd like to turn this over to our scholarship application committee chair, Gregory Bell. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Um, like Mr. Chapman said, my name is Gregory Bell. I'm a part of the Morehouse class of 2022. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I currently serve at the Joseph and Evelyn Lowry Institute, named after Dr. Joseph E. Lowry. Today, I would like to dedicate my section of the presentation to police brutality victim Ahmad Arbery. On February 23rd, Ahmad Arbery decided to go for a run. A little after one, Mr. Arbery was chased down cornered and killed by Gregory and Travis McMichael. Little to no investigation was done by local officials until a video went viral online which sparked widespread outrage. 
Charges were not brought against the culprits until a probe by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation happened months later after the shooting death of Ahmad. News of racial undertones to the shooting broke yesterday. As this trial proceeds, we will see if justice is served for Ahmad. So now let's talk about the application process. Let me try said a little bit earlier. Our application opens on December 15th, which is the first notification for early decision at Morehouse College. However, we do close it April 1st in order to have all decisions in by May 1st, which is that national college deadline. Once we have reviewed all applications, we select our finalists who then are able to select interview times via Skype. Applicants must serve, excuse me, applicants must revert, reserve their slot in order for us to see that they're willing to go into the interview phase. After we have them reserve their slots, we then email them about their time and then from there we give them decisions after the interviews. Scholarship app acceptances are due on May 1st. So this is an example of how our application process runs. So as you can see, we start off online having applicants completed. We move to the review section, which comes to the scholarship committee. Then after we have our review, we have committee members select our scholars who move on to the interview stage. And this year we did it via Zoom. Then we recommend the scholars who we want to become a part of the incoming cohort to our director. And then from there, we look at the financial aid, uh, have they been accepted in the Morehouse? And from there, we're able to give notifications of scholarships to our Bonner class. So a little about our application process. Um, when we release applications to our committee members, we don't want to overwhelm them. So we, in, we release them 20 at a time to our applica application committee members so they're not um, getting fatigued via reviewing. Um, from there, we get each committee member uh, to review each application. And once we've come to a consensus, we average their scores, which allows us to categorize each applicant. Um, we categorize them into desirable candidates to um, candidates who may not be suitable for our Bonner um, program. So the top 20 scores actually move automatically to the interview stage. However, we do have 35 application slots to make sure we're not overlooking anybody. And then from there, we democratically vote on the cohort. So here is our application rubric is, this is what we use to grade our applicants when they submit their form via form stack. Um, it shows our first generation college screen at the very beginning. However, we do have questions surrounding what they do via service, how they can help benefit the Morehouse uh, Bonner Community Service Office, and um, what things like what social justice initiatives are important to them. Um, this is for our finalists. Once they get past that initial screening, we then move to our Zoom interview rubric, which kind of gives us a better understanding of who these people are. So um, one thing that we ask, we do ask hypothetical questions to see um, how they react in certain situations. We ask them um, what would make them an asset to the program. And um, we ask them to tell us about themselves a little bit, just so we're not overlooking anybody. So COVID-19 was something that was totally unexpected. Um, we, when we started planning earlier this year, we, we weren't looking at later in the, in the months that, oh, COVID's gonna happen. However, we've been reforming our application process for years now. Um, like Mr. Chapman stated earlier, we had moved online via form stack, and this really helped us transition online seamlessly. Um, one thing that we did do is we moved to Zoom from Skype um, just to have a platform that's easy for people to use. Um, however, without the communication of all committee members working, working together, um, 
none of this would have been possible in a timely fashion. Next slide. Uh, so I would like to hand it over to Tyron Gamble. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyron Gamble. I'm a sophomore biology major from Georgetown, South Carolina, and I currently serve as the freshman class coordinator for the Bonner Office of Community Service here at Morehouse College. And today I'm dedicated to the police brutality victim, Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland was a 28-year-old African-American woman who was found hanging in a jail cell in Waller County, Texas on July 13, 2015, three days after being arrested during a protocol traffic stop, which was conducted by state trooper Brian Encinia. Her death was then ruled a suicide. Her death followed by protests against the, her arrest, disputing the cause of death and alleged racial violence against her. In September of 2016, Bland's mother settled a wrongful death lawsuit against the county jail and the police department for $1.9 million and some procedural changes. In June of 2017, the charges against Encinia were dropped in return for his agreement to permanently end his law enforcement career. No justice for the wrongful demise of Sandra Bland and no peace for the black community in America. Now let's get into our Barnard class of 24. Out of the abundance of candidates who settled, submitted applications for the Barnard Office of Community Service here at Morris College, 15 individuals stood apart from the rest and in the honorable title as Bonner Scholars. With that being said, I would like to highlight the names of these distinguished gentlemen. Joshua Salmon, Porter Alexander Times III, Horace Ryan III, Truth Majumbi, Andrew Stewart, Lorenz King, Caleb Tensigne, Elon Gibson, Alan Donegan, David Valdez, DeAndre Walter, DeWitt Measle, Niles Tunsil, Matthew Seawood, and Sandro Bordeaux. Now, this cohort of young men shows nothing but diversity and potential. Their overall skill set, dedication and service, and academic success will not only lead them for a successful matriculation through Morehouse College, but for better days of service to come. Now I would like now I would like to just give a little debrief of the class of 24. There are four non-English languages spoken from East Coast to West. 11 states are represented, including Washington, D.C. Out of the 26 majors that Morehouse College has to offer, 10 of them, which include African American Studies, Biology, Business Administration, Cinema, Television, Emerged Media Studies, Chemistry, Economics, Political Science, and Sociology will be studied. As a cohort, they have accumulated 14,288.5 hours of community service, which is on average 952.57 hours per scholar. And a few service sites that I would like to highlight are the World Bank, Breakthrough Greater Boston, the Corella and Bertram F. Bonner Foundation, and the city of Montgomery. In order to co connect with us, you may reach us via email at communityservice at morehouse.edu. You may follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Bonner Scholar. You can also reach us via Servant Leader, powered by Give Post. Now I would like to open the floor to any questions that you all may have for the Bonner Office Community Service here at Morehouse College. Hi, I actually have a question about um, about how many applicants do you guys normally have a year? Uh, I'll take this one. Um, we don't have an exact number because we do weed people out throughout the process over time. However, it's um, well over 100.
Um, someone sent a question into the chat box saying, how many interviewers are present for each interview? Yeah, okay, I'll take this one as well. Um, so all seven of our committee members are on the interview. Um, we want to make sure that we, we are making sure that everybody gets a chance to be seen and that when we come together to vote democratically on the cohort, we're gonna recommend that uh, every single person has seen each individual candidate and can make a fair judgment. Do you find that when students are applying to Morehouse, they already know about the Bonner program? Are you actively recruiting them, or do they, um, or do you target people as they apply to the school? Uh, yeah, so that's actually a really good question. Um, a lot of people actually applying to Morehouse, it's kind of a mix. Um, some people may have uh, had a brother or sister who came through the college and tell them to apply. However, there's a good amount of people who don't know about uh, the Morehouse Bonner um, Office of Community Service at Morehouse. So one thing that we did was we actually uh, talked to uh, a couple kids at schools and things of that nature to make sure that people knew what the Bonner Office of Community Service was in the Atlanta area. And um, we went to uh, Freshman Discovery Day, which is when um, the incoming seniors of high school come to Morehouse College to uh, see what Morehouse is about, and we had a table set up there. Hi, my name another, is. I'm sorry. And another thing to highlight is that our Office of Admissions, as well as our Office of um, Financial Aid, we've learned recently that they do um, inform families of the program. Uh, because of the resources and opportunity to give back and double down on the mission. And the Office of Student Life actually has a uh, annual program that's called uh, Get on the Bus, where they go to uh, various cities across the nation and just bring the Morehouse culture and experience to different schools. Um, it's a day of mentoring and also, uh, you know, uh, includes information on college access and just trying to empower um, the young people that that look like us and that we serve. So that's been, that's also been a strategy to kind of get the word out as well. And do you all only admit scholars during their freshman year or do you allow people to come in their sophomore year, junior year, senior year? So I can speak to that. Um, so, with the Barner stipulations, they have to be in the program for at least two years. So more times than not, because of the competitive nature of getting the uh, Barner scholarship at Morehouse, our scholars typically perform very well, um, really exceeding the minimum requirements, uh, be it service, academics, so on and so forth. Occasionally, um, you know, we may have someone that may need to take time off or don't return to Morehouse because of extenuating family circumstance. Uh, circumstance. Um, this past year, we actually did accept a transfer Bonner um, from another institution, and um, he's been doing quite well. So for the most part, um, our incoming cohort remains intact, and the latest that we will accept a new student will be the sophomore year, um, towards the end of the sophomore year, to make sure that they can get those two years in. Are there any more questions? I, I know you said that um, each award might be different depending on students, but can you give us a range of what those awards might end up being 
from sort of smallest to most, or do you not want to go into that? To be honest with you, I, 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 it's hard to memorize that um, because we have actually 60 scholars. Um, and um, so, so what, what would happen is based upon the EFC, because the college is committed to um, making sure that the student is packaged in a way to where they don't uh, accrue no, any more than $19,000 in student loans um, or receive a plus loan that's higher than the EFC. What will happen is that the financial aid office will look at various sources of free money to make sure that that student, um, you know, that, that we're in compliance with the, the Bonner um, agreement. So the actual line item for the Bonner scholarship could very well be, you know, 5,000 for one student and then another student is based upon their academic profile or admissions profile, another student may only you know, get $2,000. Um, but that could be because that student has also qualified for other institutional funds or external funds um, to where they're still, so to where that the program is still in compliance to making sure that those students uh, graduate with no more than $19,000 in student debt. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, it's, it's, it really varies from student to student, kind of based upon the EFC and their profile and what they're eligible for. Um, Dr. Whitney asked, what was the most difficult part of the selection process? I can answer that question. Um, as a interviewer of the applications, a lot of the applicants are very unique and they possess different tangible talents and skills that the Bonner Office of Community Service can utilize. Um, we, we just don't want to have, you know, the same person, same person. We want people who can have different, different uh, hobbies, different talents. You know, as Mr. Gamble said earlier in his presentation, we have scholars with four different languages. Um, we also have scholars that worked in different areas of education, of um, with the Bonner Foundation, uh, also with even governmental agencies. And so with those different tangible skills they possess, not only can they bring, not only can they bring a good name to the Bonner Scholar Program at Morehouse College, but overall what they can do for the Bonner Foundation. Hi there. Thank you guys for your presentation. I really appreciate it. I um, work at High Point University in High Point, North Carolina, and we are a Bonner Leader School, so it's a little bit different because we use federal work study money. have to have some other um, information, but I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the first gen screening and what you do with that information. So the first generation screening, um, so as you know, racially, there's not a lot of diversity um, at our institution, um, since we are a historically black college. Um, not all students are black or identify as black. So we look at different uh, ways um, to make sure that we have some diversity and also to try to figure out a way to take advantage of the spirit of honor, which is, um, in our belief, access to college and an opportunity to serve. So typically first generation students um, who show the potential to add on to the history of Morehouse College and to be assets to the community. Um, those first generation students typically don't have a lot of money um, to make it through all four years. So on the rubric, let me see if I can go back. So on the rubric, what we do um, is take that information and give them additional points. Um, to kind of promote, uh, you know, taking in more students who are first generation um, and kind of changing that narrative for that family.
know this is not the, the necessarily the subject, but I have a question of just for uh, Bonners, current Bonners at Morehouse. What's what do you love most about the program there, or what do you love most about being a Bonner? I can speak to this. So what I love most about the Bonner Office of Community Service at Morehouse is it gives you an opportunity to serve, of course, where you're needed, but you can also serve towards your interests. So me as a biology major, um, it gives me the opportunity to kind of expand upon my realm of biology. If I wanted to do community service within that realm, I could. Um, just as if someone in sociology, if they wanted to do community service within that um, within that field, they could. So being able to, you know, expand with your interests as well as where you're needed is most definitely one of my favorite things about Bonn at Morehouse. Uh, absolutely, and I'll speak on that. Um, I think one of the beautiful things about the program is self-growth and that self-growth benefiting everyone around you not just in the Bun office, but in the external community as well. Um, personally, I've grown, I've grown so much because it was my goal. It was really my goal to attain a leadership position and make a change within it. And I've, I've gained so much experience as far as teamwork, as far as communication managing, uh, time management, um, just following our student development model as well with the five E's, expectation, exploration, experience, example, and expertise. Just really matching student talents with community identified needs. I think that's, that's something that I've really enjoyed as well as just going outside of my comfort zone and trying new things. As well as Mr. Gamble said, I too am a biology major. So working with health disparities, public health, those are of my interests as well. And I can speak to this as well. Um, one thing that I always like about being a Morehouse Bonner is that you're able to really connect with the community and you're able to give them a voice or give them something that they're able to build on. And um, coming from a place of privilege, you're able to understand a lot more about what's going on outside of the walls of the college and really get in with, with the community. One of the things I want to highlight about these gentlemen, um, so you heard from Greg who served as our committee chair, and I think it speaks volumes because Greg actually uh, got involved in giving back to the program itself. Um, his first year, at the conclusion of his first year, um, he served as a committee member, and he saw some opportunities to improve the process um, for the applicant, as well as for the college to promote efficiency, as well as identify a deeper level of passion and he came back and he did an excellent job and my hats off to all you know uh, students during these troubled times I couldn't imagine transitioning from the residential to a, a remote you know format for education and a disappointment um, you know centered around that and the stress and you know it's, it's a lot um, but you couldn't tell you could not tell in all honesty you could not tell with the way that he led this committee and more importantly with the commitment from his committee members. Um, I think that's a, a good testament of, of teamwork, individual leadership, um, and just accountability. Uh, they, they were focused, they were, they, were, they were really locked in, and I'm really proud of the work that they did behind the scenes, and even um, stepping up to share, you know, some of our growing pains and, and, and how we approach uh, what we do at Morehouse with our application process. So I just want to say uh, hats off, um, you know, to our presenters and, and definitely hats off uh, to you all as Barna Scholars. You are doing the work that we absolutely need. Um, if you have any questions, you definitely know how to uh, get in touch with, the, with us. Um, and we'd love to learn from you all as well. Um, thank you to all of our wonderful presenters. It was really great hearing from you all about your program. Um, like Mr. Chapman just said, if you have any questions, uh, you can definitely reach out to any of them. The recording of this session and the materials will all be posted in the Bonner webpage um, for download as well.
And thanks, Raj, for your support um, and getting this up and running and, and making sure everything go, went as smoothly as it did today. Of course, thank you all so much. All right, well, you all enjoy the rest of the, uh, the, the rest of the workshops and stay safe and may your loved ones stay safe and healthy as well. Thank you.